Good morning. It's a beautiful Palm Sunday. It's warming up a little outside. So we're glad you're here. Make sure you get your palm branch. What is palm palm leaf? Palm branch? Palm branch. <laughs> Join me as we read uh, scripture this morning, Matthew 21, 1 through 10. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there, with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter of Zion, See your king comes to you riding gentle or gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd had spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let's pray. God, I thank you for the truth of your scripture, for the gift of your prophecy, and that you have proven it true over and over and over again. As we enter into worship, as we focus on Jesus entering Jerusalem, may our hearts be focused like that. Hosanna, save us. You are, a, you are a king, and you came humble and gentle for us. Let our hearts be focused on that this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand and join us in worship. All right, it's Palm Sunday. Let's see those palm branches waving, okay? Hosanna.
you do a little bit of greeting right before just a moment just a minute we're going to sing one little song i forgot are you ready today is pastor e's birthday everybody wave to pastor e our kids pastor so acapella let's sing happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday pastor e happy birthday to you. Right. You see him today, give him a little handshake with a little money in it, okay? <laughs> How's that? Why don't you guys greet one another and we'll call you back in just a minute. you find your way back <laughs> let's praise the lord he is worthy today amen Praise the valley, praise on the mountain. I praise my 
praise is a shout that brings Jericho down. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, I won't be quiet. Praise cause you're sovereign, praise cause you reign, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I'll praise, praise cause, cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true, praise cause there's nobody greater than you. I'll praise cause you're sovereign, praise cause you reign, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I'll praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true, praise cause there's nobody greater than you. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, I won't be quiet, my God is alive. How could I keep it inside? It says, my soul won't be quiet. Lord, we rejoice today, God. Oh, Lord, we rejoice, Lord, just like they did on that day when you walked and you rode into Jerusalem. Save us, Lord. We need your salvation today. If you don't know the Lord today, I hope you don't walk out without knowing him as the Lord and Savior of your life. That's what we celebrate today. That's why we're excited. That's why we rejoice in this building, because he has set us free. He has set us free. Thank you, sir. song of ages to the Lamb. And all who've gone before us, and all who will believe, will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Your name is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name it stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name, it stands above them all. And the angels cry, Holy, all creation cries, Holy.
greatest, your name is the greatest, your name, it stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name, it stands above them all. Your name is the highest, your name is the greatest. Your name, it stands above them all. And the angels cry, Holy, all creation cries, Holy, you are lifted high, Holy, Holy forever. above all names, Lord, all powers, all positions, Lord, your name is the name above all names, hallelujah, come on church, do you believe what you're singing today, his name is above all names, hallelujah, thank you King, thank you King, hallelujah, and we thank you for what you've done for us God, and this week, holy week, Lord, we're reminded of Lord, as they marched into Jerusalem on that day, Lord, when everybody was shouting, Hosanna, God. Well, as Pastor says, when you marched in, you knew what that week would hold. But Lord, you did it anyway. And you laid your life down for us so that we could be saved. Hallelujah. You went to the cross to bear our sins. Lord, you went to the cross, as Isaiah says, by your stripes so that we could be healed. And our church would believe that by his stripes we are healed. Scripture says to call on the elders of the church <laughs> and pray for them. And here's what it says, and the sick will recover. <laughs> so if you have a need today, a physical need, I want you to come forward and stand in the front here, not in the aisles. We have people that will pray for you as we continue to worship. But if you have a physical need today, would you come? We want to stand and believe with you in Jesus' name for your healing. So we're going to continue to worship him and thank him.
could sing these songs. Every song was dead when you never came. So I you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Oh, come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Because you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise you get shy on me lift up your song cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs get up and praise the Lord so I throw up my hands praise you again and again cause all that All that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I've nothing else fit for a king, except for a heart singing hallelujah. up your arms say thank you Jesus and all the precious in the cross that makes me white as snow no other bound I know 
Wonderful Lord, God, our, we head into this holy Passion Week, God, was the flood of emotions and memories and highs and the lows of the week, the pain, the suffering, the joy, the hopefulness, kind of all this rolled into one. And so, Lord, we just, we just humbly come before you this morning, God, our, our hearts are just wide open to you, God, whatever you need to do in our life today, this week, this coming week, God, we just give you liberty, Lord, just, just have your way. In Jesus' name, Lord, just whatever you need to do, God, we've, we've come to meet with you here today. God, we're, we're celebrating, we're looking forward, there's anticipation, and yet we know there's pain and suffering in this week. And, and so, God, our hearts are full of gratitude. We sing these words, Lord, not, not just a pretty song, but the holiness of God, the, the body and the blood, the remembrance, kind of all just rolled together today. And God, we're just a grateful people today. We're just people of thanksgiving today. God, our hearts are full. Thank you, God, that you're so faithful. Thank you that you're good. And so, Lord, we just this whole next week, God, we just pray for wonderful times of worship, God, just times of meditation upon your word. Lord, just quiet times alone with you. Holy Spirit, speak to us. Lord, draw us in, we pray. God, help us not just to rush through a, a busy week, all this stuff we got to do, but God, just to, we just want to sit at your feet today. You are good, loving, kind, gracious, merciful. God, you're holy. And so, God, we come to meet with you today. God, be exalted here and around the world. All week long, we pray. May the name of Jesus be lifted up. Have your way, we pray in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. 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 You can see to this morning. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thanks, worship team. I know it's Palm Sunday. We had palm branches at the beginning. We are doing uh, communion at the end of the service. Uh, we did communion last Sunday. We're going to finish up with communion again today. Uh, so if you came in and got your palm branch, but missed your communion elements, there's a couple baskets in the back corners with these in there. So just a little heads up, this would be a great time to slip out and get those if you need to get those. So uh, well, welcome to Palm Sunday. This is a day that we just uh, kind of kick off Holy Week. It's going to be a, a a great rest of the week as we finish out this month. A lot going on this week, so just kind of buckle up, grab a bulletin, there's a whole out with all the information in, to, uh, in that, so we're looking forward to just a, a great week. Uh, thanks to everybody who came out for our annual meeting last Sunday afternoon. God's been good to us. Attendance is up, finances is up, lots of good stuff going on. Projects are getting taken care of. 
Got a couple new deacons, Clay Hansen and Dave Jokers are our new deacons. Uh, ben Schoenthal timed off. Thanks to Ben for six years of uh, service. They joined uh, Josh Jokers and Mike Peters. And so uh, looking forward to just a, another good season in the Lord and what God has for us. Uh, thanks to all of you who are faithful and you're giving all year long, your tithes, your offering, your missions, faith promises, all that kind of stuff. We don't take up physical offerings anymore, but there's offering bas- uh, boxes on the back you can give online. Go to BethelSickmore.org and just give that way. But just thank you for your faithfulness and, and, and your giving. We had a great meeting last week. We did uh, one major issue that we're having. We're just running out of space again. So you probably noticed that. So uh, we added a second service a few years ago. And uh, so we're kind of running out of space again. So if you've got 5 or $10 million that you would just like to give to the church, <laughs> just drop it in. Maybe don't put that in the boxes in the back. We should probably be a little more careful with that. But just pray about that this week. And... Uh, <laughs> Um, but just, uh, just uh, next Sunday's Easter, I don't know if you know that or not, next Sunday's Easter, so it's going to be a, a full day, and so uh, just encourage you. Hey, if you haven't tried out the first service, come try out the first service. We don't do children's church and nursery the first service, but great service. May throw in an extra ham or two, but it's basically the same service, and uh, we have about 50, I think probably about 60 this morning, had a great crowd in the first service, and, and so it's, a, it's a, not just for old people, uh, it's a great service, uh, and so... Um, Try that out. But then also just be sensitive, if you would. Kind of park away. We, I, do you, have you noticed we don't have a parking lot? I don't know if you've ever noticed that. We don't have a parking lot. So just kind of park away. There's other lots you can pick. I always park behind Frontier. Visitors don't know about that. Uh, there's nobody there on Sunday, and so I park over there. So just kind of park away. Let other people get a little closer. Uh, move up. This will be the hardest one out of all the whole list. Uh, move up. Scoot in. Just, just be aware of people around you. If you've got visitors or people coming in. Uh, we're getting ready to launch out our new welcome team plane here really quick, so uh, looking forward to that. But, but we're kicking off Holy Passion Week today. This is Palm Sunday, of course. Uh, lots going on this week tonight as we're doing a community Pentecostal worship service. We, in fact, we met here last year. I had a great evening of worship, but we're going up to the Crosswind in Genoa, Crosswind Community Church, uh, Four Square Church up there. It's just an evening of worship, 6 o'clock. So come on out tonight. Just a great way to kick off the week with our brothers and sisters in the Lord as we worship is on this Palm Sunday. And then, of course, this Friday is Good Friday. Uh, we stop to remember the work of Christ on the cross. We do a community service. Uh, this year, the service is over at uh, Trinity Lutheran in Nacal. That's at noon. It takes about an hour. We try to do it over the lunch hour. Uh, there's also a crosswalk if you want to be a part of that. We're going to meet at the Cal Vineyard, which is about a mile away, carry the cross to the next service or where the service is this year. So you're welcome to be a part of that if you want also. But 1130 at noon, that's kind of our community time for Good Friday. And then, of course, next Sunday's Easter Resurrection uh, morning. So looking forward to a great morning, 8 o'clock, 10.30. We do a carry-in uh, breakfast at 9.30, so just kind of bring the services together. It's Easter morning, let's have breakfast together, so bring some food to share uh, for our, our carry-in breakfast at 9.30. Uh, we decorate with Easter lilies. If you want to buy an Easter lily in honor of a loved one who's passed away, there's $10, there's forms in the back. Today's the deadline for that because we've got to get those ordered. And so looking forward to that. And then a lot of times uh, we'll do uh, water baptismals on Easter. Uh, if you've given your heart to Jesus, never been baptized in water, talk to one of the pastors and we can get that lined up. That's just kind of a fun way to kick off Easter, death to life, all the good stuff that goes along uh, with that. We love Christmas around here. Christmas sets everything in motion, uh, but this is the week where everything's changed. It is finished on this week. And so uh, be sure to take some extra time this week just in worship, just on your own. Uh, go read through the Gospels, kind of the Passion Week, uh, Holy Week. Uh, slip away from all the stuff of life. Just sit at the feet of Jesus this week. And just uh, don't, don't rush through and just get it over. Take time to slow down, soak it all in, uh, the work on the cross. So that's my encouragement to you this week. So if you've got a Bible with you, turn to John chapter 12. John chapter 12 is where we're going to be uh, this morning. John 12. It was a, a sad week for our, our Bethel missionary family. If, if we just came to our missions convention, there's a sheet out in the lobby. All the missionaries that we support monthly, we send them money every month. And one of those missionaries is uh, Ed Buck. That's Russ's brother, his older brother. And so uh, they serve in France. He and his wife, they have three kids, 15 to early 20s. And uh, Kirsten, Ed's wife, passed away suddenly this last week, probably mid-50s or so. Very unexpected. And so we're just mourning with, with Russ and his family. And Ed, uh, this is a missionary we've supported 15, 20 years or something, done a great work there in France, and so uh, we just grieve with that family today. I think Russ's parents are over there right now with them, and uh, I said three kids, and, and just life is all of a sudden gets turned upside down, and so 
uh, we just want to, in fact, why don't we just stop and pray for them right now? Lord, we just stop and pray. This is our family. They're our, our physical family for us, and so we claim them as our own. And it's also part of our missionary family. God, for years we've supported them as we've lifted up their hands, as we've prayed for them while they've gone on the front lines there in Europe. And so, God, we just we grieve today. Our hearts are heavy. We, we mourn without answers today. But, God, we, our hope is in you. And so we pray for Ed. We pray for those kids. We pray for the extended family, her family, his family, and, and God, that church there in France. And, and so, Holy Spirit, go where we can't go and do what we can't do. And so draw them close, love them. God, may you be their comforter. Help, na- help them to navigate this during the time that they would run to you. And that, God, you would, we know you're faithful. We know you're good. And so, God, but we just we mourn with them today because they're our brothers and our sisters. And that's what family does. And so, God, we, but we pray for them specifically. In Jesus' name, may they sense you closer than they ever have this week. They're, they're not alone. Maybe they're far from this country, but God, they're not alone. And so God, be with them, we pray. Give them wisdom, direction. May your hand rest heavy upon them, we pray. In Jesus' name, in the name of the Lord, amen. Amen. So keep them uh, in your prayers, if you would, uh, this week as we just grieve and mourn uh, with them. So, well, here we are in John chapter 12. If if you're new to Bethel today, maybe you're new to church, uh, just in general, you're wondering why in the world these people waving like branches around, what did I, is this a cult? And what are we, what, what am I doing here today? And uh, so this is Palm Sunday. This is the day that Jesus triumphantly enters in Jerusalem to start Passover week, which is now we call Holy Week um, or, or Passion Week. And so, he, and so they gathered branches. In fact, we'll, we'll read it here again in a second. But they lined the road, they waved them, they shouted Hosanna, roughly transmitted, Lord save and and so we just like to kick off Holy Week. A lot going on this week just with palm branches and sing a song and wave a branch. They're, they're free. You can take them home with Please take them home with you uh, as you go today, and we would appreciate that. But we'll also be taking, like I said, communion at the end of the service today, remembering the Last Supper, which would have been Thursday of this week, but we're going to take it today. And uh, we talked a lot about communion last Sunday. The fact the whole service was kind of directed towards communion. But Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper communion on the night before he was taken to the cross. He says, do this in remembrance of me. So we'll, we'll be closing our service with communion again today. What was, there, what was our sermon last week? What does communion do? It unifies us, right? We are one when we come to the table, right? Nobody goes ahead of anybody else. We're all just sinners saved by grace. It unifies us. We're family. Uh, we remember, do this in remembrance of me. So we're going to remember the cross as we kick off Holy Week today. And then it's also just a time of examination to examine your heart. And so we like to do that. So we'll be doing all those at the end of our service uh, again today. But let's jump on in here. John chapter 12. Uh, Pastor Emily read out of Matthew's gospel, the account, but we're going to read it out of John's account. And then later on, we're going to throw them all in. But let's look at John chapter 12 here, verse 12. It said, the next day, the great crowd that had come for the feast, that's the Passover, uh, they'd come for the feast, heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. And they took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey, sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. And at first the disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him, and they had done these things to him. Uh, Now in the crowd that was with him uh, when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead, continued to spread this word. Many people, because they had heard that he had given this miraculous sign, went out to meet him. And so the Pharisees said to one another, see, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. Amen. Let's pray. God, thank you for this wonderful, Lord, just not a cool story, not just a holiday. Let's wave some palm branches. But God, something shifts on this week, Lord. There's a, there's a change, Lord. There's, there's an intensity that gets ramped up and things begin to accelerate on this day. And so, Lord, we, we want to pause as we head into this week and remember the hope that is in Jesus, God. This was, has been your plan since, the, uh, Lord, since Adam and Eve fell. Uh, one day, the Messiah was coming. And so, God, we just pray as we look into your word today. God, as we prayed before, whatever you need to do in our life, have your way today, we pray in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. So we've had a little fun on this Sunday. We've waved palm branches and we've sang and uh, we brought the kids in. Uh, some of them were even excited to do it. Uh, I, I, I told Pastor E last week, can you just tell them to smile, right? And so just fake it like you're happy to be in here with the big people. And uh, 
as everybody stares at you while you wave palm branches. But it's kind of this celebratory kickoff to, to Passion Week. And so, but there's a lot going on in those short eight verses that we read there. I know it was just a quick eight verses, uh, but there's a lot going on in John's gospel. Uh, and it's a cool scene, but, but also prophecies are being fulfilled. Things are being set in motion, and things are going to get very intense over the next coming days. Everything gets ramped way up on Palm Sunday. The intensity has already been growing, but as we hit this week, everything gets ramped even, up, uh, even higher. In fact, this, this scene that, that uh, processionals, they come into Jerusalem, all four of the Gospels share that scene. If you read through all four Gospels, uh, some share this story, they, the different pieces of, of Jesus' life. They kind of have different audiences. This is more of a Jewish, you know, Matthew and other things. But all four of them are going to share this story under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because something is up as they walk into Jerusalem. Now, just stop. Let's, let's kind of set the backdrop for that Palm Sunday uh, processional. Uh, you notice there in verse number 17, they talked about this guy, Lazarus. What did it say in 12, 17? Uh, now, the crowd that was with him, when he called Lazarus from the tomb, raised him from the dead, continued to spread this word. So there's, there's, who's this Lazarus guy? So Lazarus, just days before, not long before this, there's a man named Lazarus who's a friend of Jesus who dies. And his, his sisters Mary and Martha, and, and so they put him in the tomb. He's been in the tomb for, uh, for four days now. And, uh, but now Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. In fact, it's just the chapter before that we're reading, John chapter 11. Let me, let me read you that story. John eleven thirty eight. 38. Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. This is Lazarus' tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, Jesus said. Sister Martha said, but Lord, the sister of the dead man, uh, by this time there's a bad odor. King James says he stinketh, right? And so there's a bad odor. He's been there four days. So, right, four days. 33 AD, he smells by now, right? And, and so then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? And so they took away the stone, and, and Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you've heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he said this, Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out with his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. And Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes, and let him go. So think about this. So Jesus has been teaching and preaching about three years now. And so he's done miracles. He has authority. People are just enamored by him. He's walked on water. He's raised the dead. He's fed the 5,000. And so all the supernatural signs and wonders, authority, all these things are going on. And, and so he's pretty well known. By the time we get to here, he's pretty well known. And some people hate him, right? Some people hate him. Some people love him. They're all in. And then in the middle, there's just a bunch of people trying to figure this out. Who is this guy? He has authority. Did you hear about, did you hear about Lazarus? There's a buzz going around the crowd. And, of course, this is a Passover time, so you have these hordes of people. Everybody's on their way to Jerusalem for Passover. This is one of the big feast vessels of the year, so they're all coming to town. And so the crowds are coming, the words, and they're all talking, and they're whispering uh, about this guy named Jesus. And you got this huge miracle that happened. Uh, Bethany is like two miles from Jerusalem. And so it's not very far away. This is very fresh in everybody's mind. And this word is traveling around about Lazarus and Jesus and who is this guy. There's no social media yet, but the word is out. It's gone viral. Uh, it's Passover time. Everybody is on their way. And there's this buzz going around about Jesus. And everything is ramping. It's like pouring gasoline on the fire. Everybody's already been talking about him. But wow, we've just gone to another level with Lazarus. And so everything <clears throat> is coming together right at this time. And so Lazarus was in dead in the tomb for days. Uh, we've been hearing about him. And so things are peaking for Passover week. And the stage now is being set for this Palm Sunday uh, processional. The, there's a buzz. There's this activity that's going on. And so here comes Jesus riding on a donkey into Jerusalem, and it reaches this fever pitch, spontaneous parade, a processional breaks out. It wasn't planned. Nobody had it worked up. There wasn't you know, a planning committee, but all of a sudden, uh, you know, they just start grabbing palm branches. They're taking their cloaks, which is kind of their outer garment. They're laying it on the road, and they're shouting Hosanna. Nobody planning this, but you know, it's just what begins to happen. And so all these things are, are the waving palm branches, because that's what they had that was available. Uh, years ago, my Palm Sunday sermon was, what's in your hand, right? You don't always get to prepare. You're not always ready, but, but what do you got? You know, so many times we focus on what I don't have or somebody else has what I wish I had. And if I had that, well, this is what I would do. Well, what do you have? Guess what? They got palm branches. 
And so today, palm branches are an act of worship, and they're laying them out, and they're putting them on the road, and, and uh, that's a whole other sermon from years ago. But Jesus is on the move, and everything is beginning to take place, and, and prophecy is being fulfilled right before their eyes. Hundreds and hundreds of years old prophecies are being fulfilled. In fact, how did John say it? Verse number 14 and 15, Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, do not be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. Now that prophecy comes from Zechariah chapter 9. <clears throat> Over 500 years before Zechariah wrote these words, in chapter 9, verse 9, rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem, see that your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, on the foal of a donkey. Now, Zechariah's prophetic book was written from about 500 to about 550 AD, so hundreds of years before. It's kind of broken up in a couple pieces over a series of years. And, and so the first half of Zechariah, uh, the exiles are, 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 the Jews are coming back from exile. Of course, Jerusalem's tore down. It's, it's a mess and all this stuff. We don't, we're not going to go through all that story. Everything is just in ruins. But he's encouraging them, rebuild the temple. Rebuild the temple. And so it's in the first half of the book is this encouraging, uh, let's rebuild the temple. Then you get to the second half of the book. The second half, starting at chapter 9 here. And the second half is written to a discouraged people who've completed the temple. Because there was a rumor going around that when we get the temple done, Messiah comes back. And so there's kind of been this buzz 500 years before Jesus actually comes. Um, you know, if we get the temple done, Jesus, or they don't have it all figured, but Messiah, the anointed one, will come. And so they get the temple done, and he doesn't show up. And so they're waiting. The, you know, the, the word on the street is that once we get this done, he's showing up. And so now they're kind of getting discouraged on that side. So they were discouraged before. Everything's in ruin. No, no, build the temple, build the temple. Jesus doesn't come yet, so they're getting discouraged. And so he writes this prophetic word to them. Uh, there in verse number 9, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, on the foal of a donkey. So he's saying, hey, don't give up. Don't be discouraged. Messiah is coming. God has not forgotten you. Everything is taken care of. Um, you know, just hold on. Messiah uh, will be here one day. And so here he comes riding on a donkey. Now, you may think, well, that's not very exciting, is it? Right? It's, but how many people have ridden, probably nobody in this room, but over the years, how many people have ridden into Jerusalem on a donkey? Once again, probably not so much in the 21st century, uh, but for hundreds and thousands of years, you know, a lot of people rode into to Jerusalem on a donkey. What's the, the big deal about that? Lots of people have done that. Once again, probably nobody in this room, I'm guessing. And uh, most of you haven't even ridden on it. Who's ridden on a donkey? All right, so, that's, so we're narrowing the numbers really quick. There's right there. And probably none of you did it in Jerusalem. And so, but, but this, this, we have all these prophecies of hundreds of years are beginning to come together. Just the donkey one is over 500 years. The donkey one, write that one down. The donkey one is over 500 years. But as you begin to, so over 300 prophecies were made about this Messiah, this Jesus that's coming one day. And so it's just a guy riding on a donkey. Okay, that's pretty, that's a little vague, right? But as you begin to stack up over 300 different prophecies, over the years, it's a statistical impossibility if it's not true. If God doesn't orchestrate this, this will never accidentally just kind of happen. We had a special speaker a couple years ago, Rick Magoo, and uh, he cited, this is a fairly well-known statistic, a guy who wrote a whole book about it, um, but for Jesus to fulfill just eight of the prophecies out of over 300, just eight of them, it's like one in tenth to the seventeenth power. It's like taking uh, silver dollars two feet deep over the entire state of Texas, blindfolding yourself, walking out for days and picking up one and getting the one, right? That's, that's like, that's the statistical improbability of just eight of these. And so, and so you can imagine that when you have over 300 of these, if, if God isn't in this, this doesn't happen. This really, this really is the Messiah. This really is the Messiah. Of course, by now, all of you made out your NCAA men's brackets for the Weekend. I told you I'm preaching about this every week for a month. Because you're good Christian people, and you, ought, you need to know the truth. And uh, so, we, so we have a family bracket, and uh, we, do, we do with our kids. And, and, uh, and so there's no, it's not gambling, there's no buy-in. And uh, But Sonia and I buy a gift certificate for the winter. And, and uh, so for some of you the backsliders that don't know, this is the greatest weekend in sports. 48 games over four days. It's, am I right, Mark? This is fantastic. And, uh, and, and so... 
But just over Thursday and Friday alone, there's 32 different games played. And so on your brackets, you pick out who you think is going to win. And so you know, these big bracket tournaments. So ESPN, just the ESPN alone, 22 million brackets were filled out on ESPN just to see who was going to win. And then you add in CBS, NCAA, and some others. And over 31 million brackets were filled out just for this uh, tournament. And so the first two days, you have 32 games, right? It's 50-50. One team's going to win, one's going to lose. At, at the end of two days, nobody had it right. Nobody. Nobody had over 31 million times. There was only 32 games. You only had two choices on, on each game. Um, but zero perfect brackets left out of 31 million. Uh, the NCAA hired some guy one time. He said to win the entire, if you had all the brackets totally complete, it's one in nine quintillion. Guess what? That's still less, way less than one in eight prophecies. It's still way less than one in 300. But this is real. This is true. He is the Messiah. And here he is come riding in on a donkey. And so just think about the Holy Week. So here we go. Jesus rides in on a donkey. Check. Betrayed by a friend. Yes. Abandoned by his friend. That's another one. 30 pieces of silver. That's Old Testament. We marked that one down. They're going to take that silver by a potter's field. It was prophesied hundred years, hundreds of years before. He was going to be tortured. They're going to divide his garments. There's going to be, he's going to be thirsty. They're going to give him bitter drink. There's going to be a crucifixion. His piercings, his hands, his feet. His side is going to be pierced. None of his bones are going to be broken. And on and on and on. Just There's a whole bunch of them just compact in one week. Not to speak of his birth and of his second coming and all the other stuff that goes along with Jesus, but just in this one week. And, and so we've got to stop there because we don't have time to go through all 300. But, but, but think about all of that multiplied over hundreds and hundreds of years. Just the donkey's 500 years old and rolling all these together. And so when Jesus comes in riding on a donkey, it's one more piece of the puzzle that says, I am the Messiah. This is God-ordained. This isn't a fluke. It's not just a freak accident. I didn't get lucky and got my 32 games right. I'm fulfilling over 300 prophecies. Now, I don't know that there were people in the crowd who quite got the donkey prophecy yet. I don't know if they quite figured that out on the fly. I don't know if they had a, maybe they had a Messiah prophecy scorecard checklist, and they were going, okay, oh, donkey, you know, and so I don't know if they did that. I don't think they did. I'm guessing that they didn't do that. But somewhere along the line, by the time we get to Matthew, Mark, and John, because all three of those, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, they all write this down in, the, in their letters. This is what Zechariah said. In fact, John even says here, the disciples didn't even understand it until after Jesus was glorified. So I doubt that the crowd is picking up on this nuance. But they do know this, something big's going on. Some, something big's going on here. And then, of course, the singing and the, the shouting begins. Hosanna, right? Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We read from Matthew at the very beginning. I, I, I read from John. Let's just throw them all together here, right? Matthew, I won't read all of it, but a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of them and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? And the crowds answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Mark put it this way, many people spread their cloaks on the road while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Luke said, when he came near the place where the road goes down to the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, even the stones will cry out. And of course, John, where we already read today. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. And they took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel. Hosanna roughly translated means, uh, save, we pray. Lord, save. I beg you to save. Please deliver us. And, and uh, let me nerd out just for a second. Here's a quote from a Lexham Bible dictionary. It, it said, in Jewish liturgy, the word is used during a cycle of prayers and sung during the Feast of Tabernacles. Once a day during the feast, worshipers would walk around the altar saying, save now. We beseech thee, O Lord. We beseech thee, O Lord. Sit now prosperity comes out of Psalm 18, or excuse me, 118. 
And on the seventh day, it was repeated seven times. The seventh day is called the Hoshana Rabbah. The Hosanna ritual combines the idea of praising uh, realized victories over the nations and sympathetic prayers for salvation. So it's a combination of those things. During the Feast of Tabernacles, when the priest reached a certain point in the ceremony, a trumpet sounded and all the people waved uh, branches of palms, myrtles, and willows. And at one time, uh, Hoshiana was abbreviated into Hoshiana or Hosanna because this word was used during the time of celebration it became associated with rejoicing as evidenced by here in the Gospels. And so you have all these Jews, they're all very familiar with this. They, know, they don't know what's really going on that day, but they understand Hosanna. They understand uh, part of the, the waving of the palm branches, which is kind of out of their Old Testament ceremonies. So it's a shout of celebration uh, for what God has done, but there's also a shout of, of Lord save at the time of rejoicing, but also a call to salvation all rolled together. And like I said, its roots are found in Psalm Chapter 118, O Lord, save us. O Lord, grant us success. And so then it, then it starts up again at the temple later in the day. Matthew says, Jesus entered the temple area and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the, the tables of the money changers, the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you're making it a den of robbers. And the blind and the lame came to him at the temple and he healed them. And when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did, and the children shouting in the temple area, Hosanna to the son of David. They were indignant. Do you hear what these children are saying? They said to him. And Jesus replied, yes, have you never read from the lips of children and infants? You have ordained prayer. Once a couple more prophecies just got fulfilled right in that little section right there, right? Out of the, uh, out of the from the lips of children and infants, uh, that Jesus is in the line of King David and uh, the lips of the children. But Hosanna, <laughs> Rejoice in Lord save, a celebration and yet a yearning all at the same time. And here comes Jesus riding into town. And so there's celebration and there's Lazarus, there's hope. And once again, I don't think they fully understand all the donkey and all these other things, but something is stirring in the heavenlies. And so there's a shout of celebration and also a longing for salvation. Lord save, be our redeemer, bring, bring hope. So that's all nice, a nice history lesson, but what about 2024. What do you want us to do today? Is this it? Do we wave palm branches? We'll take communion. We'll go on out to our lunch. Are, are we done? Um, so w- without getting our house ahead of ourselves too far, we're going to celebrate Easter resurrection uh, next Sunday. But the good news today is Jesus really is the promised Messiah. He really is. Over 300 prophecies have been fulfilled. Like I said, is this a statistical impossibility. The people lining up that day, they probably don't have it all figured out. But we get to look in the review mirror today, kind of like John and the other ones, and they go, oh, this, this is what, yeah, that was written in Zechariah. And oh, yeah, that was, that was written over there. And we can look back, and now we can begin to put all those pieces together. Jesus is the Messiah. He is the Savior of the world. He's come to save us from our sins. He came to, to bring us life and abundant life and The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, and we find that all in Passion Week. Now, once again, the crowd doesn't get all of that. Not all the crowd is going to stay with Jesus. Not everybody at the parade is going to be at the cross. In fact, some of them will be the same ones who on Friday chant, crucify him, crucify him, give us Barabbas. Some of them had different plans for Jesus than the plans Jesus had for Jesus. Uh, they had plans for Jesus. Here's what we think you ought to do. And, and, and let's be honest, even today, a lot of people who call out to Jesus for help, they'll call to Jesus for help, but they won't call out for surrender. They call out for Jesus to help fulfill my plans. I really don't want your plans, but if you could take care of my plans, right? Hosanna, Lord, save me from my problems, right? Hosanna, I could use some cash. Right? And so, uh, Hosanna, uh, Lord, if you could come, and I've made a mess of all, if you could clean up this mess, and then I'll, I'll make another mess, but if you could clean this, this mess up, but after the parade, after things get very difficult, or if God doesn't do things the way that I want him, and, and then all of a sudden now the shout turns to crucify him, crucify him. I don't need you anymore. I'm, I'm not bowing to you. You're going, to bow to, you're going to do what I want. I'm not going to do what you want. Jesus, you serve me. And so some of them wanted 
a king to set up an earthly throne, right? And so that they're excited, is this, is this the day? We talk about this every year, right? Is this the day that, that we throw out the Romans? Is, is, this a, is this a return to the good old days when King David and King Solomon were king? We had gold and chariots and victories, and we had prestige. And is, Are we going to drive out Rome and their army? I'm tired of paying taxes to Rome. And, and uh, someone needs to restore Jerusalem to its, its good old days, the splendor of its former. And so the crowd has their own plans for the post-parade party. It sure doesn't involve death. Their plans are to be served. Their plans are to be lifted up, but not lifted up on a cross to die. Now, we talked about the prophecies that Jesus has fulfilled. Guess what? He's still not fulfilled all of them. Because there's still another section of scriptures and prophecies to be fulfilled. And, and uh, we won't spend a, a whole lot of there, but we won't really, because right after Easter, we're going to take a little time. We're going to talk about the coming of Christ after Easter. And so we'll save a lot of that. But just a little sneak peek ahead. Jesus is coming again. And then they all get fulfilled. The, all of the rest of them get fulfilled at that time. We've, we've been going through First Thessalonians on Wednesday nights, and the theme in the entire book is the return of Christ. So we'll, we'll leave that till after Easter, but just a little teaser, Jesus is coming again, all right? But here we are in Sycamore in 2024, Sunday, March 24th. And the same question that the Jews had that day or the same question we have today, what are we going to do with Jesus? What are we going to do with Jesus? Is it just a nice party that leaves us unchanged? A lot of people are going to leave that Palm Sunday unchanged. Is it a curiosity? We'll come and see. Maybe we can get a blessing for our plans or what we want to do. And I heard he's doing miracles. I talk about a Lazarus guy. And, or is it the, the call of the true Hosanna? Lord, deliver us. God, save. God, save me. I beg you to save us. It's the question of eternity. What will we do? with Jesus. And just like that first Palm Sunday processional, some people come to Jesus to get stuff. I want blessings. I want this. I want that. I heard he does miracles. I heard he provides. And so what can I get from Jesus? And uh, some come because it's everybody else is coming. Hey, there's a crowd over there. Let's go see what's going on. It's loud. It looks like it's fun. And some people just join in. They're, they, they hop on the bandwagon. And everybody else is doing it. Some come out of curiosity. But, but Jesus is looking for faith and surrender. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Romans 10 says, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's with your heart that you believe and are justified. It's with your mouth that you confess and are saved. As scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. There's no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So we're going to take communion here in a few moments. We're not going to, we don't want to rush to the communion table here today. But from the in fact, musicians, why don't you guys come? They're going to come and lead us in some worship as we get ready for the communion table. Today is the day of salvation. Palm Sunday, today is the day of salvation. All those people gathered on the road, they didn't need an earthly king. They needed a savior. They, many of them wanted an earthly king. That may even have been a nice, but they needed a Savior. Hosanna, Lord save. Lord save. A shout of rejoicing at the young, same time longing for salvation, longing for hope. Why don't you stand this morning? They said they're going to lead us in some worship here this morning. We're going to take communion here in a few moments. But Palm Sunday, who do you say that Jesus is? Is he just a miracle worker? Is he a cool guy? Hey, everybody's had a, it's a fun morning. We wave palm branches. Or, or is he your savior? Is he the Messiah? The prophecy fulfiller? I know we're looking ahead, but the one who is raised from the grave next Sunday. We're going to come back as we celebrate next Sunday, the, the resurrection. But today, the call is, who do you say Jesus is? They're going to lead us in worship here. We're going to prepare our hearts for communion. If you've never called out to Jesus to be your Savior, can I encourage you to do that today? Do that. Don't be like the crowd who just gets stirred up and then walks away. But be the one who follows Jesus. Repent means to go a different way, to have a change of mind. I'm going to follow Jesus. I'm going to, Jesus said, if you would confess your sins, he's faithful and just, will forgive you and cleanse you from all your sins. So remember them no more. But confess your sins. Place your faith in him and give him your heart.
He wants to be your Messiah. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. So they're going to lead us in worship. Or maybe you just want to come and sit at the feet of Jesus. Just come and find a place of worship as we get ready on this palm. Say, if you want somebody to pray with you, I'd love to pray with you. But call out to the Lord today. Call out to the Lord. Lord, you lead us, guys. Thank you, ladies. Wonderful Savior. We started off the service waving palm branches. We ended up the service singing about blood. It's kind of a, it's kind of strange, isn't it? Until you peel it back. Because Jesus, we're getting ready to take communion here in a while. And, and uh, one of the names of Jesus was the Lamb of God. He was, this, he was the perfect one, the spotless Lamb, the perfect sacrifice. And unless a sacrifice was made, a life wouldn't be spared. So a life had to be given so that life could be spared. And, and so that's what we're going to celebrate this all this week. Jesus was the perfect 
sacrifice. The wages of my sin was death. We've all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. Someone, I had no hope. No hope. I was on my way to hell. I earned it. I deserved it. I bought it. I had no hope. But Jesus took my place because he was, he was perfect. He was the, the Lamb of God. And, as, and so as his life was getting, as his blood was spilt, in fact, as we take communion today, one of the things we'll talk about today is this, the juice side. He said, at, as he's on that Thursday night, the Last Supper, they're celebrating Passover and they're going through this multi-hour meal from the Old Testament and and they would drink of four different cups, and the third cup was called the cup of redemption. And he pulled out that third cup and said, drink of this. This is my blood which is shed for you. Prophetically speaking that he was going to die, and, and because of his death, as his, as his blood was shed for us, as his life was given, that we could have life. And so that's why we sing about blood today, right? Because that's, that's our only hope, is that Jesus shed his blood. He gave his life that we could have hope. In fact, it was, I'm reading from Corinthians 11. This is Apostle Paul, but he's talking about that. He said, for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, so that's that Thursday night, at the, the Last Supper, Passover meal. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread. Would he given thanks? He broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So just turn that cup upside down and peel off that little small layer and take out that little piece of bread. And this is the symbolic of the sinless body of Jesus. And so he said, do this in remembrance of me. And so as we head into this Holy Week, we're going to stop and we're going to remember like Jesus asked us to. Let's pray. Lord, we pause and we give thanks today. God, thank you that you loved us that much. Thank you that while we still hated you, you pursued us. Thank you for, for the joy that was set before you. You endured the cross. It's shame, it's suffering, it's pain. Taking the sins of mankind upon yourself. You who knew no sin became sin for us. And God, we will never forget that. Always keep us close to the cross. And so God, we remember that as we enter into Holy Week today. Thank you for the price that you took on your back for us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take the bread together. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. So remember, he's taking this at the Last Supper. He said, we're, we're going into a new covenant, covenant of grace now, because of the work of the cross. So do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me, for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So peel that little layer off. Let's pray one more time. God, we're a grateful people today. We're people of celebration. We're people of palm branches, God. We're uh, people who loves the joy of the Lord and all, of, all the, the expression of that. But Lord, it all started at the cross because we were hopeless without it. We were like that crowd <laughs> crying out, rejoicing, and yet, Lord, needing a Savior. And so, God, as we take communion here together today, we're acknowledging you're our Savior. And so we do this in remembrance of you. And so with all this stuff going on this week, the cross and the empty tomb are central. And so God, we remember that cup of redemption that paid the price for our sins, that washed our sins away. Oh, the blood of the Lamb. Thank you that you loved us that much. We honor and remember you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's take the cup together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just tell him how much you love him today. Just stop as we head into this week. Let's just, let's just pause for a moment here today. God, we give you first place. Hosanna. We rejoice, but God, we need a Savior. We celebrate, but we're longing for your coming. And so, Lord, we give you first place today. All the stuff of the world, all the busyness of the week, people coming, hams and eggs and all, all that little fun stuff, Lord. Everything pales at the cross and the resurrection. God, you are central. And we exalt you today. Thank you for the body. Thank you for the blood. Thank you that you rode in on that donkey. Thank you for all the prophecies you fulfilled. God, thank you that you had a plan in place 
hundreds and hundreds, thousands of years before, and you were all bringing it about because you wanted to redeem us. You wanted to spend eternity with us. You wanted us to have hope. And so all this great master plan is culminating in passion. And God, we're a grateful people. We give you praise and thanks in Jesus' powerful, wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Hug somebody. We've got a, a few deadlines going on. If there's going to be a great week, hop in with everything. Take time and worship this week. God bless you. We love you. Amen.